Hey guys, V here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a liquid cooler into your PC. That is an AIO. Uh, what that means is it's an all-in-one. There's no uh, liquid you need to pour or anything like that. With all that being said, let's get right into this, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. All right, before you start taking everything apart, what you want to make sure of is that the water cooler you got supports your specific socket. So I know this is the latest AMD uh, socket. So in this case, it's the AMD AM4, and there should be a compatibility list somewhere on the box. And if not, definitely look it up before you buy it. Uh, so I know this is compatible. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and power this PC down and unplug it. And then press the power button a couple times to discharge any electricity going through it. Now go ahead and just unplug everything else. All right, now that you've established that your water cooler will fit this socket, go ahead and take your screwdriver. Every motherboard is going to be different. Um, CPUs are going to be different. You know, the sockets are going to be different. So uh, just use your best judgment and look up exactly what uh, yours um, requires to remove it. In this case, it's just four screws, one up there, one there, one there, and one there. And you're just going to want to go ahead and untighten them. Uh, basically start here or anywhere really. But once you start, go across and kind of do it in an X, um, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to start here. And I'm just going to go about halfway. So a couple turns, go down. Do the same on this one, couple turns, then go next one, couple turns, and the last one, couple turns, and then this one, uh, you can start over. And um, there is a bracket in the rear, which I will show you in a second. And I'm sure you heard that bracket fall. So the CPU cooler won't just fall off and I'm going to show you this in a second. Um, go ahead and unplug it. Once you unplug it, as you can tell the CPU cooler is kind of stuck on here. You don't want to just yank it right off. Uh, Intel has a whole different um, socket and they have a metal plate. Uh, securing the CPU to the motherboard AMD does not so you don't want to just rip it out because you can bend the pins and stuff so what I usually do is I grab it and I'll try to twist it out like I just did usually you might have to go side to side and if all else fails um, there it is if all else fails what I recommend and if you do pull the CPU out what I recommend is getting some uh, some kind of thread or floss uh, works really well and kind of put it in between and then just kind of pull it. Um, I kind of wish it did stick so I could show you that in this video, but unfortunately it did not. And that's all it takes to remove that. Now you can see these holes, empty holes. Let me turn this around for you guys. All right, so that bracket I was telling you about in the rear, that's this bracket right here. That's what the thing uh, the cooler was bolted to or screwed onto so you're gonna have to hold this on and um, we'll get to that in a second just make sure to keep that handy all right now we're gonna go ahead and open the box and start setting this thing up to be installed all right so let's go ahead and grab the actual cooler itself, there's the fans, all the different brackets and wires and stuff like that. It is going to be, it is going to look a little overwhelming, but don't worry, I'll walk you right through this and we'll go from there. For now, let's put the fans to the side, keep the cooler right here. There is a manual for this uh, cooler in here and it'll tell you um, basically which um, 
brackets and stuff that you might need to use. Like for example, here's this one, LGA 115X. It'll tell you what you need to use. Uh, I think if we flip it over, there might be AMD and four. So as you can see, um, for the AMD AM4, which we're going to do, we're gonna need these brackets right here. And like I was saying before, those, these are going to clip on to this. Um, if you don't have these, you can probably order these online. Um, so there's that. I wish every bag was labeled. That would be nice, but it's not. This one is labeled. However, this is going to be your new thermal paste. So keep that handy. All right, now grab your cooler. And we're gonna go ahead and put our bracket on here. So grab these two brackets. Before you do anything, do not forget to remove this label. Otherwise your temps are gonna be through the roof. You're gonna be curious as to why. So remove that. I'm gonna remove it right now because it has this giant tab and it was getting in the way of the bolt hole. Uh, otherwise you can remove it right before the install. So uh, I'm trying to figure out, do these go on top or the bottom? All right, so there you can see that the bracket does in fact go over, not under. So the bracket will go this way, just like that. All right, so it was a little bit confusing, but uh, the screws that go with the AMD one also were in the bag for the Intel one. So I assume these would probably fit the Intel socket as well. You're just gonna have to go kind of searching for those screws. So now get your screw ready. Get this uh, bracket on here properly. Go ahead and line it up. And start screwing it in. All right, get your other one. Again, make sure if you're doing this AMD one, make sure these little things are facing the bottom of the cooler. So just like that. All right, now tighten them down all the way. And this is ready. Now we're gonna go ahead and work on everything else. All right, now let's move on to the motherboard. We are going to need those brackets, like I said. And luckily I still have those screws saved from when I built this PC. This is why it's useful to keep boxes and extra stuff that came with your PC build. Instead of throwing it out, just throw it in a closet. You never know when you need it. So here's that bracket that fell off of the back. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put this back in. There you go, that's in. All right, now that you got that plate back back there, uh, you're gonna need to hold it or tape it or something so it stays in place. And then with these brackets, you wanna put these things that clip on away from the CPU. So just like this, as you see I'm doing here. Don't tighten it all the way until you got both screws in. Just like that. So just like that. Now is a really good time to take your cooler and try to figure out where you wanna mount it and how you wanna mount it. So in this case, I think 
I'm going to mount it up here. Let me make sure this will go. So kind of like that. I'm thinking just like that actually is perfect. Yep. Good. All right. Now that we know we're going to mount the cooler up here, um, we can go ahead and mount the fans. There is a couple ways you can mount the fans. I'm going to mount them on the bottom of this. You can do it on the top, depending what you want. Um, in this case, I'm just going for these fans to be exhaust fans. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and mount them just like this with the front facing down. Basically, the front of the fan sucks air and the rear blows it out. So always remember that. So in this case, we're going to mount them just like that. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So this cooler comes with screws like these, these really long ones. Basically, what you do is you put these all the way in like that and start screwing them in. And now just tighten them down. You don't have to go crazy with these. Just enough. All right, so we're ready to put this in. So on the other side, on the back side of this, there's also screw holes, like I said before. Um, you can mount the fans back here or whatever. In this case, we're gonna mount this directly to the body of the PC. So just like that. And it does come with short versions of those screws that will fit in those holes. So let's go ahead and do that now. I like to start with the middle ones just to get those out of the way. And um, it'll also hold it in place while you do the rest. So just like that. So there you can see it all screwed in. All eight of the screws and now it's secure. Now I'm going to go ahead and get all of these cables out of here. Like I said before, I put the cables towards the rear so I can get them out in the rear. All right, I got those cables back there. Now all that's left to do is clean off the CPU, put new thermal paste, get this on there, and plug everything in. All right, so to clean off the CPU, you can use um, alcohol pads, like the little uh, alcohol wipes, or uh, the way I'm gonna do it is Q-tips and some rubbing alcohol and get it all off of there, we'll be good to go. And at this point, I'd give it a couple minutes just for the, all the alcohol to evaporate and then we can go ahead and install. All right, now what we're gonna go ahead and do is take your thermal compound, your thermal paste, and put it on however you prefer. A lot of people just say a pea-sized dot right in the center. That should be fine, that'll work. I always do an X, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the CPU block on, and uh, for this one, make sure these are unscrewed almost all the way. Just don't unscrew them all the way. There we go gives you enough slack. So we're gonna go ahead and do the top one first. So line it up. And let me try to move this camera so you can see this. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to show you this. All right, so as you can see, let me get these cables out of the way. So stick that on, just like that. Now that one's on. Now. 
to the bottom one. And there we go. And now just go ahead and start tightening. And you want to do these evenly, top and bottom. So tighten a few on the bottom, tighten a few on the top, and just go back and forth until it won't move anymore. All right, and that's on. And as you can see, I put the cables towards the top, and now I'm just gonna run them to the back. So let's go ahead and do that now. Oh, before I do that, this cooler only comes with a three pin. This will plug into uh, one of the fan headers. Uh, most fan headers are four pin. Three pin is perfectly fine. What this means is it's going to run at full uh, speed at all times. And with a water block, that's exactly what you want. So having a fourth pin is kind of useless on these unless you're doing your own custom stuff or whatever if you need it. But just FYI, this cooler that we used only has a three pin. All right, so I got all the cables up and away and now we're gonna start plugging everything in. All right, so to plug everything in, the kit comes with everything you need. So this here is a fan splitter which comes in handy so you don't use more than one fan header. So this one specifically is for the two fans up here. So that's gonna plug into a fan header on your motherboard and then the two fans will plug into these. So that comes with it. Now this motherboard doesn't have enough. Uh, I believe it only has three fan headers, one CPU and then two for um, uh, fans. So in this case, we have a fan splitter. Uh, so we can plug in the two top ones, but we only have one fan header left, so we can only do one of the front ones. I'm gonna buy another splitter separately, so keep that in mind if you need more uh, for your extra fans. Now for the RGBs, it comes with this splitter, and this one has four pin RGBs so you got to make sure your motherboard has a four pin RGB header if it does not you can still use it it comes with this little adapter that plugs into your power supply or off of your uh, off of your power supply and basically it goes to this little controller so you got this little um, connector here it would connect right in here just like that and then this, your splitter would plug in to the back of this using this little adapter thing. So it'd go in here, just like that. And then this would plug into here. And you have to make sure the arrows match if you're doing it this way. So in this case, as you can see, the two arrows would match and that's exactly how you plug it in. Then the other side of the splitter has these, and as you can imagine, you'd plug in the RGB from the block and the two fans up top into these. So obviously every motherboard is different. Uh, I have the ASUS Prime B450M-A, so I'm gonna show you how to do it on this motherboard, but always look at your motherboard manual uh, which I have mine here, and it'll tell you all of your different connections and stuff like that. There's a RGB connector, and it'll tell you that's number five. And basically, if you look right there, that's where the RGBs would connect, so right at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and take my RGB connection. And I probably should have done this before. Um, putting this in here, but it is what it is. All right, so I got the RGB connection connected. Now let's plug in the fan. 
connection, the fan splitter to be exact. Now for this, I'm thinking just so I don't have cables running all the way up, because I'm going to plug it in right here, right there. I don't want them running all the way up. So I'm thinking I'm going to run these down, but I might have to take the GPU out or just unscrew it real quick. Pop it out for a second. It's just an extra step, but now all you're going to see is that little bit of the cable and you're good to go. And obviously, as you can tell right there, it's a lot better than having these two cables run all the way up. Um, so, like I said, extra step just to make it look a little bit better. Alright, so there's all the cables. These braided ones here are from the fans. This is from the CPU block. So we got the fan splitter all the way down here. Good. Now, plug in the other fan. Let's take your fan cable and plug it in. There's only one way you can plug these in. There's like a little rail on the fan cables. There's a little rail right here and it'll slide on the rail on these ha uh, fan headers. All right, so this one is for the RGBs. And like I said, we got three of them. So it doesn't matter which one you plug in where, just keep in mind cable management to the best of your ability. But one thing you do need to keep in mind is they both have arrows. Hopefully you can see that and you have to match them. So that one's matched and plugged in. Now get the CPU block. That one I'm going to do next. Again, arrows facing each other. And plugged in. And last one. Arrows facing each other. And plugged in. Now those are done. Um, Basically all that's left to do is plug in this uh, fan, and well, the CPU block into a fan hub, so it, it'll run, and I'm going to plug that into the CPU fan header. Alright, so the CPU block is plugged in, all the fans are plugged in, everything is finally plugged in, besides the one fan, uh, because like I said, I don't have enough fan headers on this motherboard. So, now you can go ahead and uh, finish, oh, here's one that I didn't plug in. So now at this point, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and wire, uh, clean up all your wiring. But I recommend first, before cleaning everything up and whatever, go ahead and plug it in and... Um, you're going to want to turn it on and make sure everything works. Um, so that way, you know, you're not wasting time. All right. Now that you got everything plugged in, double checked, triple checked, everything is good. You know, it's ready. Go ahead and plug everything up. Um, and basically when you turn it on, don't get scared. There will be a sound of water. And when I mean plug everything in, I also mean your monitor. So I got mine plugged in and turned on and the reason you want to do that is because you were working on the PC if it doesn't boot up or whatever you want to make sure to see if there's any error codes or anything like that so let's get this thing booted three two one booted right up no problem so now you get yourself a water cooler installed in your PC go ahead and wire tuck everything do what you gotta do put the back cover back on put all the covers back on and basically you're good to go that's it um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you for watching I will see you in the next one peace